Hey guys, welcome back. We're going to do another Blender tutorial today. Today we're going to be doing it on how to do procedural chains and chain link. Uh, I think it's going to be a fun and easy way to understand curve tangents, curves, and just general geometry node stuff. Cool. Let's jump into it. First things first, delete the default cube. Then we're going to add a mesh and then we're going to not mesh curve, a curved circle. This will be the chain link. So we'll say chain link and we're going to tab in, zoom in. And then when we're looking at this, it's important to note like essentially the distance of everything it makes it really easy to make sure we instance correctly. So from here to here is one meter. That means that the diameter for this is two. And so just kind of keep that in mind when you move things around. So I'm going to grab here. I'm going to grab, push Y, hold control to snap it and go one, two, three, four. Nice. Grab Y, hold control. One, two, three, four. Cool. Nice. Done. We're going to jump into geometry nodes, add it here. And we're going to do a uh, curve to mesh and curve circle. And then we're going to limit this down. Something like that, maybe. And then we're going to do a curve radius. This is why we're doing it in geometry nodes to make it easier. And we're going to say random value. Let's say 0.8 to 1. Then we're going to do a resample curve beforehand to add more resolution. Let's say 20. So essentially, it makes it a bit more rough. And obviously, we can change this however we want, however you want to make your chain look. But I think 0.8 to 1 just adds a little bit of roughness. And what's nice is this is like semi procedural. So that the chain link we can move around and it will always update, which is pretty cool. Nice. So we'll tab out. Move it over here, make a new GeoNodes group with a curve, Bezier curve, and we're gonna actually scale this down. So scale 0.5, control A, apply the scale. Bezier curve, new GeoNodes, let's say chain link instancer. We pull in our chain link. And then from here, we're gonna do another resample curve. But since we just divided this by two, we know from essentially the origin, which is right there, to here, it's half a meter. So we can do length, evaluate on 0.5 meters, and this should be good. So we're gonna say instance on points. So now this curve will have points, 0.5 meters, we instance this puppy, and there we go. It's looking pretty good. Let's lower this radius a little bit, maybe by 0.1. And now we got to make sure we have the alignment correct. So we're going to do a um, capture attribute. And then we're going to keep it on point, even though we think we should do spline normally. And this is because we want to have it be the curve tangent on the points of where it's being instanced. So that's why it's going to be point and then curve tangent on that point. And we're going to do align rotation to vector. And then we're going to keep it on Z, pull it in, and then pipe it in. And maybe not Z, maybe do Y. Let's do it. Actually, we're going to keep it on X. There we go. Looks better that way. And then we're going to every other, so every odd instance, we're going to have it rotate. So the way we do that is through some really easy Boolean math. So we're going to do a rotate instances. And then we're going to do a uh, index node. And then we're going to do a uh, math node and we're going to do modulo. So truncated modulo, the value of two and this index. So essentially all this is doing is it's looking at uh, the indexes and it's, it's dividing it by two. And if it has any sort of value, it's just disregarding it and setting it to zero, I think. Uh, so then if you move it on the X, not the X, it probably is the Y, no. Maybe it's like this. It's going to be the X here. Perfect. So 90 degrees. Nice. We have the chains. They look good. I would actually move the scale a little down. Let's say 0.8. And we're having it instance correctly, which is great. So this is the basic effect. And what's nice is since we have it kind of procedurally done, we can take this and just say grab and pull it out. The chain expands. 
right click, subdivide, pull another point, grab it up, and it's curving. So as we can see, we can make this really easy to kind of have these chains linked and work perfectly. And because it's semi-procedural, where we have this kind of fake modeling here, if we pull it in right here, we can also edit these points right here. Pull this up, pull this out. Now all of these chains are also being edited. I think it's pretty cool. So what are we doing? We're pulling in a curve and we're also pulling in some information for what we're instancing, this chain link. We're gonna resample it based off of the known size of the actual chain. So we have the points distributed like, like appropriately, right? Then from there, we're going to capture the attribute on the point of the tangent, move it in with the rotation, and then we're gonna put on the X, that way we have it kind of follow the curve. And then we're gonna make sure that we have this, we basically have the scale pulled down a tiny bit. And right here, we're doing a kind of odd index capture. So we're taking a truncated modulo, dividing it by two to get only the ones that are going to be uh, even. And then that's then rotating those instances by 90 degrees. And so that's how we have it done. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I know that this one was, was super quick. Hopefully you learned something. This should be just a, a super easy way of just kind of um, understanding curves and making chains. If you found this to be useful at all, please leave a comment and then let me know what you want to see next. Uh, I'm always trying to improve, so I really appreciate that. The comments drive a lot of engagement, so leave a comment uh, on anything. Tell me your favorite color. <laughs> See you guys. Thanks so much. Augury.